Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the retaliatory attacks launched by Iran against Israel. I'm Lana Zak. Drones have been launched from Iranian territory. That marks the first time that that has happened. It is significant on multiple levels. They are now en route to Israel. As we just heard from our colleagues at BBC News, some of those drones are believed to have been shot down at this point. CBS News has learned that the U.K. scrambled jets from Cyprus to also participate in the defense of Israel. A statement from Downing Street is expected shortly. We are hearing that Jordan is also participating in Israel's defense, but we are waiting to independently confirm that. Joining us now from Jerusalem is CBS News contributor Robert Berger once again. Robert, an official, has told CBS News that anything passing over Jordanian territory will be intercepted. A U.K. official confirms that those British jets have been scrambled uh, from Cyprus. So what does all of this mean in terms of a response from the Middle East? Well, you know, it seems that Israel really isn't alone here. I mean, the British are scrambling jets, as you said. We're also hearing reports that, that the United States forces have also intercepted some of these drones. Uh, can't confirm that, but that's what's going around. Mm -hmm. So you have also Israeli defenses, and now the British appear to be involved. You have American defenses. The Jordanians don't want drones flying over their airspace. The Egyptians have just expressed concern. So um, there's a lot of defense going up around Israel and within Israel. But still, you know, this is a, this, this is a real um, game changer because it's the first time Iran has actually fired uh, from its own territory. And this is really a massive attack, more than 100 drones. And there are even reports that I'm just saying on, Isra on Israeli media that Iran has fired ballistic missiles at Israel. Again, reports from reports Israeli that media. Are, yes, that are at this point unconfirmed, but CBS News diligently working to confirm all that. Obviously, with breaking news, we're trying to sort out fact from fiction. Robert, we also see a, a, a statement from France's foreign minister saying, quote, France reaffirms its attachment to Israel's security and assures of its solidarity. So as you point out rightly, the rest of the world seems like it is mobilizing to try and mitigate the impact of these drones on their way now to Israel. And UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak put out a statement that condemned the Iranian regime, saying that the UK will stand up for Israel's security. Talk to us just a bit about how important the UK's alliance to Israel is in terms of this greater conflict. You know, what's interesting is that, you know, these countries, the UK, the United States, and others have really been uh, pressuring Israel on the Gaza war. And, and the Palestinian issue. But now when it comes to Iran, which is really seen as a regional threat that everyone can agree on, at least in the West, um, th this is very important to have the um, the allies, if you will, the United States, UK, France, now lining up and backing Israel against Iran. I, I want to almost underline what you said, Robert, because there has been more criticism of the strategies that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has employed in Gaza, the massive number of civilian casualties over there. But when it comes to an attack on Israel by Iran, we're seeing all of those allies who were perhaps putting pressure on Israel to change course now coming to Israel's defense. So what are the next steps for Israel? I don't see uh, how the how Israel wouldn't retaliate inside Iran for this attack. I mean, you, again, this is a big attack. This is a major attack. More than a hundred drones, uh, perhaps missiles as well. Um, I, I I think we'll perhaps we'll wait. Israel will wait and see how many of these get through the defenses. How many drones, if any, attack, mm -hmm. if any, land in Israel. If people are killed, that could also help determine the response. But even if, let's say, not a single drone gets through, I don't see how Israel can sit by and allow this attack to happen without retaliating inside Iran. And then the question is how severe that retaliation inside Iran would be. And Robert, as we're discussing the necessity of all of these leaders to retaliate after an assault on their sovereign territory, it's worth reminding our audience that Iran said that this is in response to what they believe to be attacks by Israel on the Iranian uh, consulate space in Syria. Some of those acute, uh, accounts are disputed, I, I will mention, and, uh, and 
Israel, for their part, has not taken responsibility for it. But if, in fact, Israel had attacked uh, these Iranian military leaders in Damascus, they must have known that Iran would respond or feel compelled to respond. Does this seem like a, a miscalculation by the IDF then? Well, some analysts would say that. Uh, some people think that maybe Israel crossed a red line. But, you know, the Israelis have for a long time have been targeting various Iranian assets. They've targeted uh, the nuclear facilities with sabotage. They've targeted drone facilities with sabotage. They've been hitting Iranian targets inside Iran. It seems like this attack, this alleged attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus was maybe the straw that broke the camel's back. And now, uh, perhaps, if you want to call it a miscalculation, uh, a lot of people here also think now that Iran has miscalculated. Mm. The feeling was that that Iran would probably strike back through its proxies like Hezbollah and Lebanon and uh, the Houthis in Yemen. By the way, there are also reports that the Houthis are, are, are firing uh, in this direction as well. But, um, yeah, a miscalc miscalculation on both sides can now even escalate this for further. And as the U.S. and other allies uh, and even non-allies of Israel are working to try and de-escalate this conflict, talk to us, Robert, about how the U.S. is likely to respond. Well, I believe we're going to—we're hearing that U.S. forces are actually involved in intercepting some of these drones that are coming in. So already it appears, I, I, I can't confirm this, but it appears that the U.S. is involved in, in stopping this attack, as well as the U.K. And, um, I, but you know, the U.S. obviously doesn't want this to really escalate further into a major regional war. So perhaps it will try to restrain Israel's response. Um, I don't, I think that's going to be hard to do, uh, after, but I, I, I imagine that, that America's plan would be to try and contain this to a, a, a relatively, to a tit for tat and try and leave it at a certain point uh, and not escalate this into a long regional war. All right. Robert Berger, thank you. Thank you. Now I want to head back over to CBS News contributor and former chief of operations in the CIA's counterterrorism mission center, Andrew Boyd. So, Andrew, let's start off given your experience with the CIA. Talk to us about how the CIA and Mossad will work together in the wake of these attacks. So, so again, we have a close, uh, we, my former employer, have a, cl uh, have a close uh, relationship, intelligence sharing uh, and whatnot. So, so CIA and Mossad be deeply uh, involved in this. But right at this very moment, uh, this is a military operation, and the, and the collaboration is between uh, the IDF and the Department of Defense, principally Central Command and its subordinate commands uh, under General uh, Eric Carrilla. But throughout, throughout the war on terror and, and, and both you know, terrorist attacks directed against the United States and its forces, or terrorist attacks directed against Israel and its forces, there's been deep collaboration between CIA and Mossad. And Andrew, uh, Iranian state television is reporting that in addition to these drones, that there were also ballistic missiles that were launched. How does that potentially change how um, Israel and others are, are viewing this attack? So, so again, I mean, I don't think people are saying that, that there's ballistic missile attacks. Again, if there was a ballistic missile launch, uh, when this reporting started, I, I think there would have been impacts in Israel by now. So, so we have to just wait and see on that. But the reality is that ballistic missiles are much more targetable than drones. Uh, I mean, again, drones, uh, you can target them, but their accuracy is not quite as substantial. And the warhead on a drone is going to be significantly smaller than most ballistic missiles. Rockets have a smaller uh, uh, warhead as well. But if there are ballistic missiles launched from Iranian soil toward, towards is Israel, that would be a s significant escalation beyond just 100 drones uh, being launched. But again, I, I think time will tell whether that is a misunderstanding of what happened or a, just a propaganda statement from the Iranian government. I wondered about that because the reports are coming from the state-run media in Iran. Uh, the United, neither our source in the United States or CBS News has been able to independently confirm that. What we do know 
are that these uh, that these drones, I believe that they are the slow moving Shahad 136 bomb carrying drones are on their way. And, and several of them, we believe, have already been shot down. Andrew, uh, I'm wondering how the United States strategy with Iran uh, may shift. Obviously, we don't have diplomatic relationships. It is a, uh, a, a tenuous relationship at best. But how how might those relationships uh, change as a result of this attack? So, so I don't think our strategic intent on our Iranian relationship will change. I mean, we have uh, goals that are consistent for the security of the United States when it comes to an adversary uh, like Iran. Our tactics may change, and, and our, our diplomatic uh, approaches to both Israel and, and its neighbors, the Jordanians, uh, and, and our, our own partners, such as the, the British, may, may change because, again, if, in fact, these weapons do impact Israel and are not all shot down, which we, we hope that the drones and if there's any ballistic missiles, that, that they're all shot down. But if they're not and they impact Israel and they kill is Israeli civilians or, or Israeli uh, military members, we, we all have to remember this will be the very first atta Iranian attack uh, on, on Israeli territory that hasn't gone through a proxy, you know, name your proxy, Hezbollah, Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad. And then the various group, groups uh, uh, in Iraq, the Shia groups in Iraq, um, that that would be a game changer. And and I and I don't know if if the Netanyahu government that they would have to do something in retaliation to the Iranians. So so our strategic end state uh, from the United States government perspective will not change. But how tactically we go about trying to prevent an escalation, and I think. You know, thought uh, discussions about uh, the drones being shot down by U.S. forces, by Jordanian forces, is part of the tactical uh, plan to 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 try to prevent an escalation beyond what is absolutely necessary. And I want to um, I want to ask you about what I heard from a former Israeli official on BBC. He said that this is the dawn of a new day in the Middle East; that things have changed uh, significantly, and this is by far. Uh, given, as we were discussing, the significance of these attacks originating in Iran rather than one of these proxy groups, uh, one of the biggest escalations in the Middle East that we've seen in decades. I'm wondering, given that Israel is already fighting Hamas in Gaza, it has problems in the West Bank and Hezbollah, can it actually engage on a third front in an actual hot war with Iran? Well, again, let, let, let's, uh, you know, the, the, the comments from the former uh, Israeli government uh, official aside, let, let, let's hope it's not the dawn of a completely new day. Absolutely. Just dawn of an uh, dawn of another day, because, um, you know, whether or not Israel can, can, can fight a three front war, you know, Hezbollah, Hamas uh, and the Iranians is, is one point. But, but, but can the United States avoid being dragged into such a regional conflict? So, so, so again, we, we, uh, we being the, the, the United States and the, and the Biden administration, absolutely does want, not want a new day to dawn and wants to, to you know, w w with the forces we have in the region, uh, helping the Israelis uh, and with our partners in the region, such as the Jordanians, try to prevent uh, that escalation. But again, if these weapons do impact uh, in Israel and, and they do kill Israeli civilians and or, and or is Israeli military members, um, we will then take another tactic and tr try to, to try to negotiate with our, our Israeli friends to ensure that they don't escalate beyond what is absolutely necessary. Again, the Netanyahu government has, has a lot of bruises since October 7th uh, and, and trying to erase the memory, uh, so to speak, uh, of that horrific uh, incident where, where you know, 1,200 Israelis were murdered by Hamas and then several hundred more were, were kidnapped. I mean, one of the ways in, in, in the history of military conflict and political uh, problems is to start another conflict, and again, in this case, would be with Hezbollah or with Iran, to get to erase the, those, those uh, issues that the Netanyahu government has since October 7th. We would r really, uh, that would be a, a huge mistake, uh, I, I believe, for the Netanyahu government to utilize this Iranian attack, especially if it is in a very limited impact to then use that as an excuse to broaden their war uh, to Hezbollah or to actually Iranian territory. Uh, because I really think the consequences of, as consequences of that, no one can predict. Absolutely. And even as we discuss the worst cases uh, that are potentially uh, in the future, 
we all are hoping for the best cases. I also want to note that we now have confirmed from our sources that President Biden's meeting in the Situation Room has now begun with his advisors. Uh, Andrew, what are some of the conversations that are going to be taking place there? Uh, so, so President Biden's national security team will be talking about various scenarios that could unfold over the next couple of hours, the next 12 hours, the next 24 hours, and what various options uh, they would endorse, both for our, our commander in the field, in this case, uh, General Kirill, the, the commander of uh, Central Command, but also what the diplomatic dialogue will be with the Israelis and all of the partners uh, in the region. As has been discussed, there's been uni unanimity on, with, amongst our allies, the French, uh, the, the United Kingdom, uh, the Jordanians, of, of opposing this attack. Even uh, we, we've heard that there have been jets uh, launched from Cyprus, uh, British jets, to help intercept uh, the drones. So there's going to be a mass of, of diplomatic engagement at our em embassies in the region. But the guidance as, as, as to what we do from a diplomatic messaging perspective and what the United States does uh, from a military perspective will all come out of that meeting that the president and his team are currently engaged in. All right. Andrew Boyd, thank you. Thank you. We will have continuing coverage on the drone attacks, even as we continue to sort through some of these other reports. And CBS News will work to confirm all of that for you and bring you the very latest. So stay with us for the latest developments. I'm Lana Zak. We'll be right back.